Welcome, I'm at the Luther Burbank Farm. It's in Sebastopol and not to be confused with the Luther Burbank Home and Gardens, which is in Santa Rosa. The farm was established December 28th, 1885. The first cottage was destroyed in the 1906 earthquake and Luther Burbank had to rebuild it, which is the structure that you see today although it has had extensive restoration work done. Now there's a small museum room. The signs are all really fascinating, but check ahead because it's not open to the public very often. Look at their website for the current hours before you come. Here is the cottage in 1915. Pretty cute. Nobody could really decipher Luther Burbank's notes, and that was actually on purpose. He was very careful that nobody could steal his work. He charged $10 an hour to visit the farm. He really did not like visitors, apparently. <laughs> he also commuted an hour and a half on his bike to get there every day. That means he left at 3.30 in the morning. Wow, that is incredible dedication. He really loved his work, extremely passionate about plants. This is a Chinese hawthorn. He was trying to create really nice edible fruits without thorns or anything. That was the idea of having this plant here. Isn't this pretty in the fall? It's an American persimmon that he was working with. So beautiful. For anyone not in the know, Luther Burbank is very famous in Sonoma County. He bred all kinds of amazing plants back in the 1800s. You've probably run into some of them in your everyday life. He also did some more exotic ones that didn't take off, like spineless cactus. But you will see a lot of it around here because it was planted when he was in the area. Probably his most famous is the Shasta Daisy. You can see all kinds of daisy themed things here at the farm, handles, mailboxes. Part of the area became the Burbank Heights housing development and that's actually what you drive through to get here. So there's no real turnoff for the farm exactly, you go through the housing first. Trifoliate orange. It's hardy in really cold weather. Well, not needed here, but all right. Interesting. Cold weather citrus. It is right near the road, so there's a lot of noise. This is so neat. Look at those roots. It's like a fairy tree. Burbank wasn't known to work with wisteria, so apparently he just liked it. He left it here on the farm. Maybe he was doing some experiments we weren't sure of. Who knows, but it's really cool. In case you couldn't tell, I adore trees and there are so many beautiful ones here. Look at this. As you may have guessed, this is a chestnut. Chestnuts roasting on an open fire. It looks like he developed a hybrid from European, Japanese, and Chinese species to increase their resistance to blight. That's good. All right, so it was created to be more hardy. There are so many cool trees here. This is an apple with lots of different grafts. This is a Winterstein apple. It ripens later than usual and is really sweet. It was created kind of in 1898. This is an active farm as well. There's lots of volunteers. There's a bunch here right now, actually. And you can come and buy plants. 
Another chestnut. So pretty. I might have a new favorite tree. I don't know, redwood is still my favorite though. But chestnut is a close second. This is a really cute area to just come and sit, bring a book for a while. If you can stand the road noise. <laughs> I saw these grapevines and I was like, well, Sonoma County. But then it looks like they're table grapes. And he was a teetotaler. I had no idea. Burbank never developed any grapes for wine production. You know what? I eat a lot of grapes. To be honest, I freeze them and then I eat them because it's kind of like a really healthy snack alternative to ice cream. Yeah, table grapes, super important. This was the right place to come as an Avalonian. Here's more apples and more. He must have loved them. You're probably tired of me showing you trees, but I'm not going to get tired of them. This is the place to come if you enjoy trees. It wouldn't be California without showing you an avocado. They're actually taller than I expected. This is the barn and more the working area of the farm. Little picnic area here. And more apples. In case you're wondering, yes, that is a cemetery, but we'll cover that in a different video. This is the flower garden. Not a whole lot going on because it's early autumn. Probably, ah, here are the daisies. Whoops, a daisy, that's cute. <laughs> this is an Australian import of rhubarb. You know, I haven't eaten rhubarb in a long time. I'll be honest. This used to be the well, they've filled it in, but it's kind of a sacred spot in a way. I finally found something that's blooming. And here are some more flowers. So they're here. I think in the spring would be the best time to come. Here's that spineless cactus I was talking about earlier. See? No spines. There's a tiny little spine right there. I found one. Ha ha ha. So mostly spineless, I guess. This is a really neat walnut tree. It only takes 15 years to mature instead of 50 or 60. He hybridized the English walnut with the California black walnut and created this. The Paradox Walnut. Great name. Here's the plant sale area. I was hoping to find some white blackberries for you. They're kind of neat, but I didn't spot any offhand. Thank you for coming along with me at Gold Ridge Farm with Luther Burbank. I've always just driven past, never gotten around to visiting before. So this was fun.